In today's lesson, we're going to talk about perimeter and we're also going to talk about quadrilaterals. We're starting on page number seven in your notes packet. So go ahead, pause the video, open up to page seven and make sure you're ready to go with the pencil. When we talk about perimeter of a shape, perimeter is like an outline. So if you think about perimeter as basically taking a Sharpie and drawing a line around the outside of your shape that you're working with. So to find perimeter, you're going to add up all the lengths of all the sides on the outline of the shape. So in example number one, we have a triangle. Triangles have three sides. So we're going to be adding together three numbers for our perimeter. We designate perimeter with a capital P, and then we'll show our work of adding up the three sides, six plus 15, plus seven. On the next line, we're going to put a capital P to represent the perimeter, and we're going to go ahead and actually add these things together. Six plus 15 plus seven is going to give us 21. Our units on this is just inches because it's just a linear measurement if we were drawing, adding up the inches around the outside. In example number two, you can see that we actually have a hexagon here with six sides. Four of the sides are going to be the same because they all have a single tick mark on them. Notice this one with the single tick mark is labeled six. That tells you that these other sides are also going to be labeled six. So when we find the perimeter, we can kind of take a little bit of a shortcut here. We have four sides that are six centimeters each. So we could just multiply four times six for those four parts. Additionally, we have the 10 centimeters on the top and the 10 centimeters on the bottom. When we go ahead and add these all up, we have 24 plus 10 plus 10 for a total of 44 centimeters. In the next example, we have a rectangular shape, but it's actually a compound shape because it's made up of two rectangles together. As we just travel around the outside, just making sure everything is there, we're going to notice that once we hit this section right here, we're missing a measurement as well as this section across the top. To be able to find this measurement on the side, we are actually going to take the entire height of the whole thing and subtract away the portion that's used down here because this is the part that's remaining. So in order to get this missing side, we're gonna do nine, which is the whole side, minus the two that was used up over here. So how long is this side going to end up being? This missing side is gonna be seven centimeters. Nine minus two is seven. To get this missing side, we're going to take the whole entire bottom and subtract away this six from right here that was used. How long is this missing side going to be? Subtracting away, you do 10 minus six. So this side is going to be four centimeters long. Go ahead, take a minute now, know, now that all of your sides are actually labeled and add up and calculate what the perimeter of this shape is. Going around all the sides, you want to add them up. So I'm going to start 9 plus 4 plus 7 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10. So those are all my sides that are in here. And if I add these up, my perimeter is going to be 38 centimeters here. Our next example um, is going to involve a little bit of algebra. This is what is distinguishes you in being an advanced pre-algebra class versus being a regular pre-algebra class, is being able to put the algebra with this one. So this question reads, the length of a rectangle is three less than twice the width. So when we speak about rectangles, we have length and we have width. So the length of the rectangle, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a picture here. My length is these sides going horizontally, so the top and the bottom. That's typically what we'll refer to as the length. So the length is three less than twice the width. Three less tells me that I'm doing minus three, and twice the width tells me I'm doing two times the width. So the length is gonna be two W minus three. It also tells me that the perimeter is 54 inches. Now what this takes into account is that I'm just using W to represent my width, because remember the length was based off of this. So find the length and the width of the rectangle. So that would tell me this side is W and this side is 2W minus 3 as well, because on rectangles opposite sides are the same. So my perimeter is 54 inches. That tells me I'm adding up all four sides and after I add up those four sides, I'm going to get 54 inches. So if I go around, I have 2w minus 3. I have a w. 
I have 2 w minus 3 and another w. My next step is to go ahead and combine like terms. So you are going to 2w plus w is 3 plus 2 more is 5 plus 1 more is 6. So I have 6w and I have a minus 3 here and a minus 3. So a minus 3 and a minus 3 or a negative 3 and a negative 3 are going to give me a negative 6. This is still going to be equal to 54. Go ahead, finish solving this equation to figure out what the width is. To solve your equation, you're going to add 6 to both sides. So you're going to get 6w equals 60, divide through by 6, and the width is going to be 10. So the width is 10, but it also said to calculate the length. So what we're going to do is plug in w as 10. So we're going to have 2 times 10 minus 3. 2 times 10 is 20, 20 minus 3 is 17, and if remember, everything was in terms of inches. So the length of this rectangle is 17 inches, and the width of this rectangle would be 10 inches. Taking a look at page number 8, our final part of today's lesson is going to be talking about classifying quadrilaterals. Keep in mind that a quadrilateral is a polygon that has four sides, so any polygon that has four sides is considered a quadrilateral. There are, however, some specialized quadrilaterals that we're gonna talk about. One of them happens to fall into what's called the trapezoid category. And if we have a trapezoid, we have one set of parallel sides. We are gonna mark these parallel sides right here with the little arrows because that shows us that those two are parallel. The other type that we can actually have, a specialized quadrilateral, is what we call a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. P-A-R-A-L-L-E-L. -L -L -E Notice the symbol for parallel is actually in the middle with the two L's. So what that shows us is the top and bottom ones are going to be parallel to each other, and then the sides are going to be parallel to each other. So we're going to mark them with two different sets of tick marks. The thing to remember is, if you're a parallelogram, you still are actually a quadrilateral. If you're a trapezoid, you are also still a quadrilateral. You are just a specialized type. Now you'll notice underneath the trapezoid side, it has trapezoid and stops. That's because we don't really name any other, any other um, quadrilaterals that have one set of parallel sides any further. If over here on the parallelogram side, though, you look, we have a couple different things that fall underneath this. So what this means is there are specialized types of parallelograms that happen to be called a rhombus. A rhombus has the properties of a parallelogram, so it has two sets of parallel sides. And then in addition to that, we actually have congruent sides. So each of these are going to actually get a tick mark then as well, because all the sides are the same. Now, a rhombus is kind of like what we'll typically call a diamond in a lot of cases. And the way that you actually create a rhombus is imagine if you take a square, and that square we're sitting on the ground here, and you put force on this top corner. In putting force on this top corner, it's going to cause this to push out, but then it's going to keep everything at the same distance, so all the sides are still going to be the exact same, but it's not quite a square because these angles here in the corner are not going to be right angles. That's your biggest difference. Another specialized type of parallelogram that we're pretty familiar with is a rectangle. Rectangles get class classified because they have four right angles. However, rectangles also have two sets of parallel sides because rectangles are also parallelograms. Keep in mind, a rectangle is not only a parallelogram, but a rectangle is also a type of quadrilateral. So as we go down the list, we're getting more and more specialized here. But the names that are above still stand. The final most specialized one is what happens when we have a rectangle and a square kind of joined together. In, or a rectangle and a rhombus, excuse me, they create a square. We have four right angles and four congruent sides. So all of these sides are going to be the same length. And we also have the qualities of a parallelogram because both sets of opposite sides are parallel to each other. So a square is a type of rectangle. A square is a type of rhombus. A square is a type of parallelogram. And a square is also a type of quadrilateral. So again, Anything lower on the chart, all of the names above it actually apply as well, but 
it doesn't work the same way going down. Not all quadrilaterals are trapezoids, not all quadrilaterals are parallelograms, and so on and so forth. That wraps up the end of today's lesson for talking about classifying quadrilaterals as well as talking about um, perimeter.